Mm-hmm. All right, so, Boots, i got to tell you, I don't think ever, seriously, ever. actually, no, no, no. I think there's been one occasion ever that I've been more excited for a balance patch in Guild Wars 2. And that's the special. Okay, tell me that occasion. That was the specialization update. With that Lions was a Arch. huge update. That was. Yeah. Where the devs did hours and hours and hours of streaming to explain it all to us, right? That so was are a big you update. Saying That's probably that the only time I've been more excited than an update than this one. You're saying that this balance patch is going to be maybe as exciting as the thing that completely overhauled the entire way. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not saying that. But I am saying there's a lot of changes, <laughs> and I'm saying because I have since the last balance with boots ascended to become the ultimate PvP pro. I'm now mm-hmm. super into balance, and I'm super into skills, oh, really? and I'm super into whatever updates the devs might have for us. Okay. Um, so I'll have so that that it, it, I'm not a PvP pro, but I've been PvPing a lot, guys. So my insights on this balance with boots. I'm not going to be very PVE oriented this time, but I'll probably have a hell of a lot to talk about when it comes well, to the PVP stuff. is unfortunate because now you're going to call me out on all the things I get wrong. Oh, well, we'll see. We will see. <laughs> Obviously, I've already talked on the channel, if you guys missed it, um, about some of the upcoming changes the devs let us in on before this went live. That's, uh, so, Boots, do you want to go through those? That was Alacrity. Alacrity change. There's going to be a change to Phantasms. Uh-huh. Uh, they said there's going to be a change to, uh, uh, what's it called? Confusion. The conversion table. Yeah. So, so we already know these things, uh, and they're all getting rolled in. So especially those mesmers, uh, listening to the video right now, lean in and, uh, we'll see what we've got. And as we go through, uh, we're going to, uh, sort of show off a little bit of footage of how this stuff goes. I'm really, uh, quite excited. So let's just talk about general changes first. Obviously. Well, hold on are... a second. We got to yeah, do an intro. This is Balance with Boots. This is Balance with Boots. All right, boom. So (laughs) there are other general changes that have gone into the game. We won't be discussing those today. It's purely just balance stuff. Uh, There's a general section. So do you want to read some of this out, Boots, and see what the devs are saying right at the start? Sure. So uh, general, sink float, the speed at which the sink and float move vertically have been reduced by 50%. So why have they done that? Uh, I don't know. I've actually got actually. no idea. That's, that's not. A, I'm not c- cluing in to now reveal the answer. I have no idea. Why have they done just, that? Just, just so that it looks better, maybe. Do you think? I don't I know. I mean, it's weird because f- so sink and float, they do move you, right? They are actually, but it's like how it's not really too different to a knockdown, is it? There's just different no. things that it'll affect. It is a strange one. I mean, they used to only be underwater. So here in game, by the way, I'm just showing people the new Tempest Elite, and I'm gonna pop it and float this golem. Maybe it is for underwater specifically, because on land it doesn't really make much of a difference. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They float. The golems floated really high there. You didn't see that, but that's quite extraordinary how high they float. They've made yeah. it move slower. I don't know why. Maybe some people in the comments have got some insight there. Uh, <laughs> what else have we got, though? Evasion. The tooltip has received a new icon. Okay, who cares? Uh, no, no, no. no. How- when, do, when, when do you ever see an evasion tooltip? I don't even know what that means. Is that for Mesmer? Is that, it's is that for, when you think, uh, is Mesmer? I, You're evading? I, Evasion, maybe, but I, I think also on uh, Thief, they have that trait that makes them evade for two seconds. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, so I don't know where we see that, but fine. Maybe in the mm. combat log, maybe when you mouse over if someone evades some damage or something. That doesn't even appear, does it? Anyway, next. Hounds of Balthazar updated voiceover lines. I wonder what that means. Really? Hounds of yeah. Balthazar? Oh, okay, so this is when you're on a human, you can cast, obviously, those elites. Yeah, and maybe it's going to say, like, Tygon, Timar, or whatever their names are. Get out there. I choose you. Do you think it might have reference to Balthazar and uh, the Path of Fire story? Uh, maybe. Or maybe it's just, like, more... Well, we're going to have to go and get... Are you in-game right now? Yeah, but I'm trying to find a human that's in an appropriate position to actually cast it, and I can't find one. Loading screens are taking ages. Uh, but So keep reading. I'll, I'll see if I okay. can see it for people. Next. Fixed, fixed a rare bug in which weapon swapping could cancel skill cooldowns upon breaking stuns. Really? Wait, could cancel skill cooldowns, cooldowns when you break stun stuns. on a weapon swap? That's I don't think that's ever happened to me, but that would be a bad bug. Okay. There is in PvP, I guess PvE as well, I can't remember, but in PvP there's that sigil of escape, which means when mm-hmm. you weapon swap, you stun break, you cleanse a mob, you cleanse cripple, chill, all of that stuff. I just got right. an achievement for logging into Lion's Arch. What the hell? Friends in high places. Oh. I got what an endless that? friendship tonic. Oh, that's the other thing from the patch. Okay, well, yeah, never mind that. Never mind that. I'm casting hounds <laughs> right now, by the way. Okay. He didn't say anything. I think that's because I have combat chatter disabled anyway. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, I don't know. We just didn't get lucky. Well, anyway, people will be able to see what that is. And uh, next, they've got consume plasma. 
Oh, no, sorry. Fixed a bug in which sink effects would permanently lock players in place when they were downed <laughs> underwater. Underwater. Okay, what? so that's So if bad. you sunk a downed body, it would get stuck. Really? Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's if they're down against the seabed and then you, you, you sink them into it. They would get stuck in the terrain or something, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, consume plasma. This bundle now grants th alacrity for three seconds in addition to his previous boon. So there you go, because alacrity is becoming a boon. So you got to add it to the giving all boons to you when you drink a mesmer slurp. Yep. I uh, I had a bit of a deal. Someone mentioned in the comments about this before uh, on one of my videos. They said that they don't like this because consume plasma is already so powerful on the thief. Right, it's already but so how extreme. powerful is alacrity for a thief anyway? I, I think it is extremely powerful because initiative dictates, yes, your weapon skills, but you get your utilities, you get steel, which all will benefit from it. But my yeah. point to the, my response to this person was maybe this could have just been a tokenistic update where they'd put alacrity on it, but it wouldn't last very long. Like if you remember when they added quickness to it, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't last very long. I mean, you can make some use of it, but it doesn't last very long. I thought they might do that with the alacrity on consumed plasma as well. But three seconds? I know, I don't know. but that with 100% like token duration, update. you got six seconds. And six seconds at a 25% reduction is not that much. I don't know. I think doubling up on it is uh, it's it's more than I thought. It's more than my response was that maybe it was just going to be a token update. Let me just put it that way. It's definitely more than that. So I don't know what people think about that. I'm currently on a ranger trying to forage for everyone to show it off because I want to see if they did it on the ranger consume plasma as well. Here you go. I found plasma. Consume oh, oh. plasma. Yeah, we get alacrity as a boon. Oh, oh, boot. So I can give it to myself as a ranger too. That's interesting. Are we going to see perma alacrity rangers now? Oh, no. Wow. You no. know what? The boon bar looks so meaty now. The other thing I was wondering about the alacrity thing that I never mentioned on your video for people is um, what traits and things are there in the game that mean you do more damage the more boons you have on you? Which of those remain? Which are strong at the moment? There's Where the are they positioned? Ellie. There's the Ellie. Does Ellie um, still have it? I think so. Does it still have it? So, like, I in was wondering Arcane? about that, whether, you know, there's more opportunity for those builds now. And that's in a variety yeah, yeah. of game types. So, yeah, an I don't extra 2% for Ellie, an extra 1% for some other people. And it's the same when they add new conditions as well. Like, engineers would, power engines would start doing more damage because they have a trait that means do more damage with more condies. But who knows when they'll add another condi to the game. Yeah, I think the most powerful one is the Ellie with bountiful power, increased damage for each boon on you is 2% each. 2%. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, well, so there you go. Um, that's the first general changes. Now, what do they say about kill credit there? Do you want to read that for people? Uh, so kill credit and loot for support-oriented players has been low, and we want to reward players for assisting their allies, so the shared credit contributions are going up by a solid amount. Okay. Um, you still need to tag an enemy for the bonus supply credit to come into play, support credit to come into play. Standing around passively granting boons is not gameplay. Oh, really? Uh, that ought to be rewarded. But this will offer a larger opportunity to weave support-oriented skills into group combat situations and get rewarded for it. That's interesting. Has anybody it's in the community They're been having kill credit discussions? I don't remember anybody really having many of those. A long time ago. A long time ago, people were thinking that you don't get kill credit enough for like just resing people and supporting people and healing people. Yeah. Uh, um, but it kind of nobody talked about it for a long time. Yeah, definitely. Like, I remember uh, before launch, the devs saying quite emphatically, Do you'll be able to play any way you want and get rewarded when it came to, like, world bosses. And then somebody tried doing the Shatterer just by resing NPCs and didn't get rewarded. This was all pre-launch. And then the devs said, yeah, don't worry, we'll add it by launch. And then they didn't. And the debate mm -hmm. raged on for ages until finally they added that. I wonder uh, in World vs. World is this, if this is going to make the most impact. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Um, and, of course, with the other shakeups coming there, which I guess we don't have to talk about in this video, uh, that might that might mean some other differences. I don't yeah. know. So 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 that was just a paragraph about it, but specifically it says increase the support credit given to players by fifty percent for granting boons, cleansing conditions, healing, and revive. Well, there you go. All right. So next section: boons and conditions. Um, in this update, we're converting the alacrity enhancement into a boon. Uh, it's weird that they call that an enhancement because enhancement actually means something different, really. But okay. Mm -hmm into a boon. For more information, see our official forum post. Uh, so Alacrity is now a boon. The recharge speed has been reduced from 33 to 25. You're okay with that, Boots, right? Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Good, good. I mean, some people are salty because it was originally 66, but my point is it doesn't matter what it originally was. It matters whether it's OP yeah. or, or, I mean, there's, or not. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things to say about it, though. Like, 25% means that a lot of people's um, 
in PvE. A lot of their rotations will rotations, tweak a bit. Yeah. Exactly. It'll feel bad for Ellie's, for example. So they say regeneration. Regeneration now uses the greatest healing regeneration to immediately heal you. Wait, what? Regeneration now uses the greatest healing regeneration to immediately heal you rather than going by each regeneration stack duration or order of application. Okay, no, it's just saying the he the greatest tick. Yeah, I get what it means. So, like, if three people have put regen on you, two of them have, have no healing power, and the third guy that finally applies it has the healing power, he'll be the one that's healing you immediately. It will prioritize that stack, if that yeah. makes sense to people. Okay, so next we got confusion. Heavily reweighted damage from this condition's base damage over time component to the damage on skill use component. The condition damage contribution has been removed Ooh. from the damage over time component and redistributed into the damage on skill use component. The condition remains split between PvE Good. and PvP slash world versus world. That so it was, was already was stronger in, in PvE, right? Yeah, no, uh, the, the per tick was stronger in PvE. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that stays in place. That's uh, that's pretty cool to me. Okay, so they've only reweighted mm. it. They haven't completely removed it. Well, it depends. <laughs> For all intents and purposes, it could be completely removed if they reweighted it to like 1% of what it was before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they didn't actually give specific numbers or whatever there. This yeah. will be... So why this is quite interesting, guys, is confusion is a major component of the Mirage builds that are in PvP at the moment. And they're extremely powerful. They do inflict burning and torment too. Uh, and can bomb you pretty hard with those. But really, these confusion stacks get very, very high. This adds more counterplay to that. Because it mm -hmm. means you're actually more rewarded by not using abilities while you have confusion on you. And this is great. This is actually what it was like at launch. I think this is a really good idea. And yeah. um, I'm glad to see a, a return to form there. Also, that has more play with some of the interesting uh, mesmer like traits. Like uh, they have a shatter trait, which is do more damage if nobody's using a if they're not using a skill. And now yeah. you know you can actually use that confusion to make them play into that a bit like Wastrel's worry in the first game. It's cool. I like it. Finally, we've got, before we get into profession-specific stuff, uh, boon and condition conversion. So I'm quite interested in this. So with the addition of alacrity to the boon system, the tables have also been updated for skills and traits that mm -hmm. convert condies to boons and vice versa. The condition... Do you think that they have to do that per skill, per trait? They have to manually... Go, they don't have, like, a table that all the skills reference. They have to oh. manually make sure every single skill does it. Well, do you, to... you know, I they should have uh, not to... They should not have to do it manually, but I think there are certain things that... Um... The way they write about it is like they do it manually, isn't it? Yeah, On the blog post from before <laughs> as well. Because I, I think earlier on in the game, the conversion tables weren't standardized. No, they definitely weren't. They definitely weren't. So Neither I was, think like, maybe that this is priority. an artifact of that. Yeah. Um, so, so do you want to read out the specifics of what they've done? They, they just say the conditions inflicted when a boon is converted have been reduced in several cases where they were found to be too strong. So corruption is in general weaker. That's nice. But what have we got specifically? Do you want to read these? So topics? alacrity, since it's now a boon, converts to three seconds of chill, which makes a lot of sense. Okay. Because it's the opposite of alacrity. Alacrity and chill, that was what we speculated. That's what's gone through. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Resistance, which used to be chill, now converts to two seconds of immobilize. Okay. By the way, confusion is ticking passively in PvP, but really small amounts. Oh, yeah, so how small? it's pretty interesting to see. Yeah, okay. very low amounts. All right, keep going, sorry. So resistance now converts to two seconds of immobilize. Resistance so that... to immobilize. I, there's yeah, not something easy for them sense. to do with resist because the the con the, the boon equivalent the, sorry the condi equivalent of resist doesn't exist in the game exactly so uh, immob I guess that's fine what does that practically mean that means we're going to be immobilizing warriors a bit more and that's actually kind of nice because yeah, of, except you know, warriors do have a lot of ways to get rid of immobilize yeah so well if they run a, a specific trait which mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but okay so that's pretty interesting let's keep going chill converts to alacrity of course okay um, in both immob directions. So, and also, the, these are standardized seconds of... So, three seconds of chill, two seconds yeah. of mobilized, three seconds of alacrity. It's not based on the current alacrity or chill. No, 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 no. I think that then the, the, what you're reading there... So, when it says three seconds or something, that then will... I think your expertise can increase that after that. But it's so. not dependent on the original thing. Yeah. Exactly. And immobilized converts to two seconds of resistance. Uh, okay. So, that's it? That's the only changes? Okay. No, wait. Here we go. Protection reduced the vulnerability inflicted from... Three stacks to ten sec for ten seconds to three stacks for eight seconds. Okay, that's not so bad. All right, uh, I'm not so sure why they did that though, because I feel like ripping protection is like I don't know pretty key. 
uh, or converting. Pre- well, I, I, I kind of see what they're going for. Go ahead. Uh, regeneration, reduce the poison inflicted from one stack to ten, for 10 seconds to one stack for six seconds. Okay. So this is just all raining in Condi, basically. I and again, so. on the PvP side, Scourges are just like extremely dominant. So, and this is one of the ways in which they are dominant. So just tuning them down. Right, so Might goes to weakness as usual, but reduced from 10 seconds to 5 seconds. Oh, that's so good! Yeah. That's so, that so was, good! Oh that my god. something that people were complaining about, yeah. Just to be clear, guys, like one of the main counters for Scourge... Right, if you fight a, a Scourge as a Condi build, the Scourge can flip the Condis back to you, so their natural weakness should be power builds. But when the Scourge can just turn your Might into really long weakness and cause you to do billions of glancing blows, <laughs> it kind of just screws over the whole idea of you know, what avenue you can use to attack a Scourge. They already have yeah. a ridiculous Grandmaster that applies way too much weakness anyway. They've just halved that. That's so good. I'm really They've happy They've halved that. it. They've halved it, but it's still quite long when you think if they have enough it, You are right, actually. Yeah, you are right. Um, so but that, that is something. It's something, and I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, vigor, reduce the bleeding inflicted from three stacks for ten seconds to two stacks for eight seconds when it's... Uh, turned into a condition. Okay, so Vigor okay. turns into a bleed and uh, they've just tuned that down a little bit. I think that's all fine. That's, you know, just minor shaves. Don't let anyone ever say they don't do small shaves because you just heard a whole paragraph of small shaves there, in, in my opinion, which yeah. is nice. Okay, yeah. so those are general changes. That will affect everyone. Obviously, Mesmer's more for the confusion stuff. Um, Necro's more for the uh, conversion stuff, though there are splashes of it in the other classes, obviously. Uh, but when now they... we get a huge... Sorry, what was that? When they were when they mentioned in the post that they were going to change the uh, conversion table, I I had assumed that they were going to change a lot more than this. Actually, not just a few nerfs here and there. I thought they were going to change some of the uh, boons to convert, like the act, what it actually converts to. You know, besides just the chill. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like ages to burning is still a thing, which doesn't make much sense to me. I think that does make sense because burning is uh eight. It, it, it's just kind of an intensity pairing, in my opinion. Aegis is an extremely intense way of mitigating damage and the most yeah. intense way of inflicting damage as a Condi. A single stack of a single Condi is burned. So I think that that's what they're going for. Also, okay. there's like the Guardian pairing. So maybe that's I thought it would be concern. like Aegis to Blind, though, just as a flavor kind of thing. Yeah, Aegis to Blind also works quite well, definitely. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Elementalist. All right, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so let's stop. So, uh, oh, no, no, no. So we wanted to read early, didn't we? I've got all these yes, little cuts to do. Okay, so we wanted to read early. So as always, uh, Boots and I both play quite a lot of Ellie. In fact, I, for the first time in about three years, have gone back to Ellie in PvP, which uh, is pretty weird for me to have done, and I'm actually enjoying it quite a lot. Um, like core so, Ellie, or...? Uh, no, not core Ellie. No, no, no. I've been playing Weaver, which, by the oh, way, okay. is the most Weaver playtime I've had because I didn't really enjoy Weaver too much in PvE. Um, so we've, we've both played a bit of Ellie and, uh, we'll go through this together blind and then we'll sort of take control of the other ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. I've got to be looking for things that I like about it because I still have Ellie to do as a bad build. All right. So just as a remember, uh, to remember as well, guys, Ellie's weapon, the Weaver elite specialization is obviously supposed to be a more offensive thing over on PVP side. We've not really seen it be that successful in offensive capacities. Uh, it's more of a sustainy durable thing. I don't think the devs want that. Also, Sword ha has been feeling weak. It's had several buffs since Path of Fire, but uh, I think it, it could use more, and it looks like what, that's exactly what they're doing here. So that's sort of the main thing. They want the Ellies to feel like, the Weavers to feel like they can do a lot of damage with their new, their new weapon. And right. I think that that's what, what, what I'm expecting. And so I guess we'll see to what extent they actually manage to do it. Do you want to go ahead and read them and we'll talk about it, please? Sure. Uh, should I read the paragraph before? Yeah, yeah, let's see what their, their ideas are, the dev's idea of what it needs. Okay, so in this update, we look to improve the Weaver's sword damage and move its high healing aspects further into the water attunement. In okay. this vein, we reduce Riptide's healing, oh no, and increased Aqua Siphon's base and healing power contributions. Um, okay, so additionally, we wanted to improve less use skills in Signets. Uh, really? They wanted to improve Signets? Yeah. Cool. And improve the Glyph of Storms, so that some storms have better situational use via differentiated recharges. Oh, differentiated recharge. What, so each attunement oh. has a different... Oh, they do, Boots. 60 seconds on the air, air one. 40 on the Earth. I guess they'll say that in the patch notes. Oh, this is cool. Okay, go ahead. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Okay, I get it. Um, all right, so and then that's it. And then we get into the actual things. All right, so number one, Gale Strike. Damage per strike has been increased. Oh, my God, I got DC'd from the server. Amazing. Damage has been <laughs> increased by 25%. 
That's pretty. You good. know what that DC probably means, by the way, that some that one of these skills, something is bugged, and if people use and they it, they have to repatch. Yeah. yeah, and there's going to have to be another patch coming very soon. <laughs> um, With a thing like this, yeah, so many different changes in the game, they're going to have some problems. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So, uh, so what? Just twenty five percent damage buff. That's cool. Okay, that's all right. Twin strike. Uh, the damage of this deck has been changed. The initial strike now deals thirty three percent less damage. And the second strike Neil deals a hundred percent more damage. Overall damage has been increased by thirty three percent. Wow. Okay, so you get double damage on the second hit. So twin strike is water fire, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um let me see here. Wow, the uh the DC proper re rolled things, the sword I bought and everything about a few minutes ago is now been deleted from my inventory. They just rolled back the game, basically. They felt you made a bad choice in buying that sword. They rolled back the game. What is this? I'm trying to show people these skills as we talk about it, but ArenaNet is not making it easy. The rollback, um, maybe maybe there's some sort of exploitable issue that they have to take care of. Yeah, well, maybe they just did with... Because uh, they can do, like, ninja patches, right? They can actually affect the game without pulling yeah. it down. And maybe that's what they just did. Okay, so Twin Strike. Okay, so Pyro Vortex is Fire Water. Uh, fire Air, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um... Shearing Edge is that... Fire Water, I think, Twin Strike. Yeah, yeah, Fire Water is Twin Strike. Sorry, I was looking at Fire Air for a second there. Because, I mean, quite often as well, I always feel weird rotating into water to try and get damage out because the dual <laughs> attacks are kind of like poo. But damn, Boots, yeah. the second strike on that is huge now. It's like a churning How huge? It's huge. It's reading at 1,281 base for huh. me right now. Anything Not over bad. 1k base in Guild Wars 2, guys, is a heavy hit. That's a big mm -hmm. hit. That is really, And what really kind of tell is it for the second attack? Uh, it's very subtle, but I guess you get the first swing to tell. It's like a big awkward slice. It looks good. Huh. I didn't think this patch would get me interested in running sword, but I think it just has. All right, keep going. So that's another <laughs> Okay, Shearing buff. Edge. Shearing Edge, the damage of the skill has been increased by 50%. Wow. Okay, Shearing Edge, edge is water, air. Uh, okay. 50%. These are almost like meaty. All the jewel attacks are really meaty. This one's yeah. over 1,000 as well now. Holy crap. Okay, Natural Frenzy, the damage from the skill has also been increased by 50%. Natural Frenzy, which one is Natural that? Natural oh, Frenzy. Oh, that's Water Earth. So that's okay. the, actually the ranged one, isn't it? 600 range. Oh, it's so heavy. Okay, it's now really Riptide, heavy. though. Riptide, the healing per level aspect of the skill has been reduced by 60%. Okay. Healing power. Oh, and healing power contribution has also been reduced by 40%, 45%. Okay, so that is not sustaining us anymore. It's an evade, though. I mean, come on, it's yeah, still strong. It's an evade, and a water field. A lot of the heal on that is the blast, right? You would combo that into the earth, too, immediately you after, and you'd blast it. You and that's not now. changed, so. Well, anyway, and now we get into the signets. Ooh, signets so, boost. <laughs> So, Signet of Water, which not that many people ever use. Activating sig Signet of Water. In fact, Signet of Water is probably, or before this patch, probably one of the worst skills in the game. Yeah. Probably. probably. I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb there and say that. And I don't think it's that that crazy. So, what have they changed about it? Let's hear it. So, the active form of the Signet now heals allies and chills enemies in the area. Oh, okay. Oh, snap. Uh, the... It's a big heal, dude. It's yeah, a 2k how... heal. That's nice. 2k. That is big. That's nice. Wow. Uh, the passive form of the signet now reduces incoming condition duration by 20% instead of removing conditions. Wow, okay. Every 10 seconds. That's uh, fine. That's better. I actually like that. I think that's fine. That's way better than a random potential proc of a single condi yeah. loss that you yeah. didn't have any control over. That's way better. That's a huge improvement. This is actually a skill now. For the first time since 2012, <laughs> this is a skill. Elementalist got a new skill this patch. It's called Signal Water. That's right. That's right. And 20% reduction means that it's kind of like two conditions every 10 seconds in a sort of a way. In a weird so, way. I mean, that's just very strong. You're going to see yeah. this in Wolves as well, people running this. This is good. Probably, yeah. Okay, and then reduce the chill duration from 4 seconds to 3 seconds. Reduce the recharge from... Oh, reduce the recharge too. 25 to 20 seconds. And it's and a ground the recharge, target. And there's the trait that drops that even lower. So you can spam that pretty yeah. quick, pretty pretty heavily, and the trait keeps the passive permanently keeps on you. Passive. By the way, I could see some signet builds coming out. And I'll tell you what, boots. There's another thing as well that I can see in game. Maybe eagle-eyed viewers have noticed this as well. That is not listed on the patch notes. Do you want to guess as something else they might have put on this skill? It's pretty big, but they have not. Um, they have not told us about. Stunbreak. No, not stun break, but that's a good what? guess. They have given it a revive. It revives allies uh. as well. It's a 5%. So it's what Merciful is now. It's a 5% revive 
pulse. So you 5%. can ground target at 1200 range, ground target cast this on your allies and heal everyone that's around it. It's got a cool animation too. And, and it'll uh, be a 16 like second cooldown when traded. And oh, yeah, and uh, obviously that is now on a class that has the new arcane stuff that allows you mm -hmm. to res people with staff also at 1200 range. Wow. That is quite interesting. That actually reminds me, do you think that this patch is going to get Firebrand to, uh, not Firebrand in general, but uh, Guardian, that 20% that revive is going to get nerfed? Oh, it was already nerfed, dude. It was nerfed pretty quickly. It's 5% now. It's not 20%. Oh, 20, by the way, happen? your instincts about that. 20 was way, 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 way OP. It was extremely powerful. You can actually insta raise people if you're quick enough with it. Uh, since it's 5%, it? it's been much more in line. Yeah, much okay, more. that makes sense. All right. Next, one more signet to look at. Signet of Fire. Okay, Signet of Fire. Now, uh, just a story about this, guys. This is actually a crazy skill. There's like a really subtle animation. There's no projectile loaded on it. It's 1200 range, and it's significant, or it used to be significant I, burn. Like a I huge, it was like 7k burn. It is still burn significant or burn. No, it still um, is significant burn because it's the same. It, it it does less stacks, but it was still the same amount of damage. So, basically. so what is the change here? I haven't read the change. Let, this is crazy. It. This is insane. Is it going to be a big buff to Condielli first of all, and then other things here? Reduced. The recharge from 20 to 15 seconds. What? <laughs> first of all. First of all. And the skill now strikes up to four additional enemies around the target. Oh, it now performs a range check when cast. That's funny. Okay. Uh, whatever. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God, though. So now that's AoE. The, the thing is, to be honest with you, Condi Ellie, as I played it, in Season 5, I climbed to Platinum on a core Condi Ellie that revolved around bursting people with Signet of Fire because nobody really knows how to play around it. But uh, it doesn't kind of work anymore because just the revive is just so powerful at the moment and the cleanse is so powerful and the resist is so powerful. But now that that's AoE and you can actually splash a ton of burn around a body, maybe that's cool. For PvE? Yeah. And P well, for, I mean, Signet of Fire is a very strong burn spell for for DPS, basically, yeah. in, uh, in raids and stuff. And so reducing the cooldown from 20 to 15 seconds is just a huge buff. It is a huge buff. That is quite extraordinary. I don't think it's enough to get me to play that build. Uh, uh, for PvE, obviously, it's a nice improvement. Um, mm. So that, were those the only two signets? I'm looking back at the page that now. That is, oh, it's only yeah. those two. Yeah. Oh, I like, those, I like those, though. Those are cool. I do enjoy those. What, so what else have we got here? We got Glyph of Storms reduced uh, the recharge of Firestorm to 25 seconds from 60. Okay, and again, this is good for the, the same Condi build. Can cleave bodies with a Firestorm. That's um, right. Probably a bit that's, slow still though. Lower, like that's a way lower cooldown. That, that's a huge buff also. Okay, and then yeah. reduce the recharge of Ice Storm to thirty seconds from sixty seconds. Okay, Ice Storm. That's, that's fine. Ice Storm's kind of weak. I don't really care too much about it, but all right. Yeah. Reduce the recharge of Sandstorm from sixty to forty. Also, uh, kind of, it's all right. Not quite enough to get me to use that. I mean, I would use this to cover blinds on myself if someone's about to jump me and I'm feeling glassy or something. Mm -hmm. I think and forty it, seconds is still too much, but it's okay. And it looks like Lightning Storm saves at 60 seconds. Yeah, because obviously PvE, everybody's using that there. And always has mm -hmm. been. It's very strong. Okay. And it's uh, 36 so, impacts with Vaughn and whatever. Yeah, so that's an interesting way this works, though. All the glyphs go on cooldown whenever the glyph is cast. So, like, you cast your Firestorm, it's a 25-second cooldown. All the glyphs are at 25 seconds cooldown. Yeah, so you could do the lowest cooldown one first into the heaviest after to get two very close back to back. I think that's how that works. I hope it doesn't go on cooldown of its other cooldown. No, that wouldn't make sense. Well, okay, so here I'm casting Firestorm. It's got a 25 second cooldown. I'm rotating to air attunement and now Lightning Storm is also is on a 60 okay. second cooldown. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, really? Yeah, and now I went to Earth and Sandstorm's got 30 seconds. Now I've gone to Water. Ice Storm's on 17 seconds. Now I've gone back to Fire and it's on 10 seconds. They all have different cooldowns. That is... That is... Not what I expected, but that's really weird. That's a different. That, I don't think the game's ever had an interaction like that, has it? I don't think so. No. That's really strange. So if I recast fire now, what happens to Earth again? All right, it goes back. It just keeps going on its merry. Oh no, everyone resets back. It doesn't stack. Uh, we could talk about this for way too long, and it's gonna bore people. <laughs> but okay. All right. So cool. Uh, what else have they got? Glyph of oh, Elemental I know. Power. You know what I really want you to check though? To cast lightning and go to fire. Oh, to see... Uh, uh, well, no, then fire would be on cooldown, but for 19 seconds. I know, but seconds. then if you go back to lightning... Uh, anyway, weird, weird, but cool. Okay, okay. Glyph of Elemental Glyph. Power, again, as a fact, this also was a good thing for Condi exploding people because mm -hmm. you'd pop it and it would start giving you, uh, you know, extra burns. Weird skill, though, because as a break stun, it kind of didn't work for how it was tuned. I'm keen yeah. on seeing a difference with it. What have they done, Boots? 
In addition to his previous effects, this glyph now also increases outgoing damage by 25% for each strike. What? 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 Hold on. Hold on. Increased flat damage. 25% the tooltip doesn't even say that. 25% increased flat damage. Wait, hold on. Oh my god. For like bursty builds? For like fresh air? I guess, but how... What? Cliff of what? elemental power into a plasma beam. That's got to be wrong. That's got to be wrong. That but can't hold be on a second. For, is it for each strike of that? Yeah, it's for each strike of that glyph. So, so like, you get five. Your next five attack. This is like the thief signet now, basically. When you pop it, the power signet. But is it? It's not the next five attacks though, because isn't there a five second internal cooldown for it? So it's like. Oh, no. I don't know. Well, here. No, I'll, that's I'll how it used to be. That's how it used to be. I'm using it and plasma beam now. Yeah, it drained all five stacks in a second. I did okay. basically no damage for what it's worth, so I don't really know what <laughs> what that means. Is it increased condi damage on the condi? Does the, do the condis no. do more twenty five percent more damage? I don't I know what that it. means. But none it. of the tooltips or anything say that it's doing twenty five percent more damage. Huh? Maybe there's a bug right now, but that okay. So what the way I understand it from this is, it gives you five stacks. Each of those stacks will increase it by twenty five percent. Right? But your next outgoing strikes. Another right, so, rollback. <laughs> so, Cole, uh, next time, cast the thing and then hover your mouse over the tooltip. I did, of those I stacks. did. There's no, there's no reference to any damage buff anywhere in game. And it didn't oh, feel well, like whatever. there was one either. So, I don't know what that was. Unless I got really unlucky with critical hits, but I don't think I did. You might have. It's kind have. of, I mean, it's a weird thing design wise to do from the dev's end, I would say, because it puts it very similar to Arcane Power, too. It'd be a fun thing to stack with Arcane Power. Well, yeah, if you're going to go that YOLO, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's interesting. I wonder whether it's fully implemented or what. But there you have it. Okay. Uh, and then and finally, then yeah. superior elements fixed a bug in which multiple weavers would override each other's cooldowns. Superior elements. Huh. Okay. Weird. I don't... Yeah. I don't... Well, one thing I am disappointed with is on the, uh, uh, so you guys don't know, but there was like a, a leaked potential patch notes that had a lot of different information on it, and it was clearly wrong now, it seems. Yeah. Um, it suggested a buff to the Elite, which would have added a bit of vulnerability and increased the damage. Um, that would have been really nice, and I was looking forward to getting more use out of it, but for now, I still sort of don't like the, the Weaver Elite too much uh, mm. for PvP, but, uh, and we didn't get it, so that's a shame. But, I oh well. like the Weaver Elite still, though. Yeah, it's just I wish... I feel like I don't have a very useful utility skill in my current play style, in my current build, but there you go. Uh, elite skill, sorry. All right, well, that's cool. That's cool changes. Uh, I'm curious about the glyph, and maybe some hot patches will come up. I'll leave in the comments, guys, if that's happened by the time the video is live. Uh, so that's Ellie. All right, so let's uh, figure out boots off screen what of the other classes we want to pick for ourselves. And we'll I be right back with you. This is going to be a ridiculously long video. Yeah, this is going to be a long balance <laughs> with boots, but hey, there you go. It's a huge patch, so... That's what we're going to go for. So, uh, we will see you guys very soon. All right. Okay. So, we're back. We're back. Oh, my lordy, 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 lordy. You didn't lordy. even get through all of them yet, so we're going to have to take a few breaks <laughs> in order to do yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> guys, this is absurd. You know that comparison to the Lion's Arch update? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's not actually too bad, especially for when it comes to Mesmer. Yeah, I figure um, and... there's some that gets a lot more attention right now than others, because I've gone through nearly four of mine in the time it took you to go through mesmer <laughs> yeah and well oh really you went through nearly four i mean i had ng to do as yeah. well and ng's had a ton going yeah. on uh which i guess is where we'll start right so i'll give you two boots will give you two then we're gonna have a break figure out some more and then we'll go again okay sounds good so, um, let's just first talk about Engineer, which has had massive changes that I didn't expect. Uh, the devs themselves say this, Boots, uh, that the Alchemy and Inventions specializations have been cleaned up oh. and had a few complete trait replacements to allow for greater synergy within their lines. Okay, and the Scrapper Elite spec has also received, cha received changes to streamline and define it as a tank specialization. Uh by adding barrier and better linking its minor traits to the new major options. Interesting. So, there's a lot here, guys, really. It's like three trait lines have been massively reshuffled and changed uh, across the boards, and I'm going to try and be very clear about what has changed by giving you guys the old traits as the developers reference them and what they've later then became. Tank specialization, though. Yeah, so Scrapper's a tank. What do you think about that? I mean, it clearly is tanky. Yeah, I think of it tankier. as a CC-heavy thing. Yeah, 
Huh, yeah, because it is tankier than, uh, definitely tankier than, um, than Holosmith, but also tankier than Core NG. I think that's how it was used mostly in PvP for a while, just because it was a little tankier, you could survive more. Yeah, um, absolutely. But I never thought of it as a tank specialization. Yeah, and they're trying to push it in that direction, I mean, heavily, especially you'll notice that the other two lines that got big changes were Alchemy and Inventions, which also are kind of NG's defensive lines and options. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of new synergies here. I can even begin to go through them, so we'll just uh, detail the specifics. So first of all, uh, the first little change, fairly small change, but interesting, I guess, uh, Net Shot, which is the rifle ability, that now has, uh, it does damage. And so what okay. that, that means is um, you can't stealth net shot someone and then blow them up as a hollow, I guess, or whatever, right. or a static discharge NG or throwing grenades or whatever the hell you want to do, right? So right. Um, NGs might not actually like that, but net shot now does damage. Um, and that's kind of a, a, a nerf, I think, disguised as a buff. Uh, not really yeah. sure whether there's too much more to say there. Yeah. Uh, so Electro World, Shock Shield on the hammer. This is the four. Uh, so block attacks while striking everyone in front of you. Now, right. as you hit people with it, you gain barrier. So this was, I mean, Ooh. in the distant future, nobody's going to associate barrier with POF. But this is another example of barrier going not just to core specializations, but even a Heart of Thorns specialization here. So right. you'll notice, by the way, it's as I hit foes with it, not as foes hit me. This could have been a really yeah. interesting mechanic where it's like attacking someone with the shock shield is what gives them barrier. It could have felt a bit mm. like um, Shield of Absorption or something from the first game, but they didn't do that. I think that they're trying to avoid stuff like that in Guild Wars 2. But yeah, so yeah. barrier on the scrapper, and that's just another thing you can utilize is what they're trying to consolidate it down as a tank. Um, so yeah, we got that. Uh, and then I think we go into the traits. So... First is a firearms change. It's, um, I think it was a firearms change, wasn't it? Let, let me, I don't even have it on right now. Yeah, firearms. So there used to be a trait that made your rifle attack faster, okay? Skilled marksman, right. and it, it reduced the cooldowns. But you'd never really run it because it was competing with this down here, no scope, which, uh, mm -hmm. you know, is loads of ferocity and stuff. I think it was ferocity, wasn't it? It's fury and, uh, yeah, it's ferocity, right? Fury guards has ferocity, right? So Doesn't you'd never also, really run it. Sorry? It also competes with, pin, uh, uh, pinpoint, yeah, right? pinpoint, pinpoint distribution. So obviously, if you're if you're raiding and you are in a condi subgroup or whatever, you're obviously going to run pinpoint. So, um, mm -hmm. but then if you're in open world scenarios or most of everywhere else in the game that it matters more, uh, you're going to run no scope instead of the rifle thing. Usually, now they've got a, n a new thing. They've replaced it. It's called thermal vision now. New trait entirely. It's gain expertise and inflict more damage to bleeding foes. So oh. there is a bit more of a dif d difference here. It's basically, do you want to give Condi damage to everyone around you? Or do you want to take Condi duration for yourself? But I mean, it's still a bit weird because it increases flat damage while incre increasing yeah. Condi duration. So uh, It's kind of a griever kind of situation. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't really think it's perfectly done. But uh, it's probably better than the old rifle attack, uh, attack speed. So there you have it. Uh, that's one new one. Uh, now, a really big important one. Very important. We're looking at the explosive line. Grandmaster Minesweeper. So, Boots, what do you know about Minesweeper? It's the best uh, trait in the game. Okay, so what I, I don't know what you've heard about this. I'm guessing you've heard what, in my opinion, will be a lot of undue salt. But tell me what you think about Minesweeper. Well, I really loved it when I made my Hollow Smith build, and you just dodge, you do a lot of damage, you could dodge again, and and it, it's a, so it's a trait that jo drops three mines behind you after you've dodged instead of just one bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's a really fun skill. It's extremely mm. powerful though, and one of the biggest things that in PvP hollows are using um right. to pressure down state bodies and uh you know kite away from people win a lot of their their fights and um it's one of it's kind of a controversial thing because it's so strong over there uh because people feel like it's kind of a no skill thing you're doing damage accidentally while you're trying to dodge i actually say a lot of the the better players are using it specifically for the damage or if they're in elixir s and dodging to do damage then they're wasting evades while they're invulnerable anyway you know it's very a greedy plays that people are making i think that it, it was it was definitely overpowered but there was more discussion about it than was warranted but the devs mm. have nerfed it and in the best way possible because really one of the big problems with minesweeper was you could dodge lay down three mines and then your second dodge would instantly detonate to the old ones while laying down three more that might also be in a hazardous position for your foe. So you could spike really hard. And there was no real yeah. way to react to that. 
So the devs have left the damage there. All the mines are there. Everything's the same, but you can play around it better now. The, ch the, the patch re notes read this, okay? Mines created by this trait now have a one second arming time before enemies will be able to detonate them. So that's pretty yeah. huge. And they also say that previously existing mines will no longer detonate when you initiate a new dodge. So the whole. So will they just disappear or will they stay there? I think they they uh they disappear. I can actually check that against the scout kit. If they disappear, it kind of is a damage nerf. So there's yeah. three, and then I do my other dodge. Yeah, they uh they despawned, but I think one blew up anyway, kind of thing maybe. But so basically, all the damage is there. But if you're double dodge dodging, elixir are double dodging again, and you're chaining four mine mm -hmm. drops down in a row, that's actually gonna you're gonna overwrite your own mines because you're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna delete the old ones while they're still in their second of arming, if that makes sense. Yeah. So if they that, don't actually disappear when you dodge, but instead have like a five second timer or something like that, that would be good. Yeah. Well, I think people uh, get basically. I think boots. This is the, one of the best ways they could have nerfed this. I think people yeah. are gonna be really happy with this. Hollows, obviously, if you all you oh, play is hollow and you so have much. no perspective of the rest of the game, you might be angry <laughs> about it. But I think that um, I think people would be really happy. This is a great way to have done it. Uh, skillful hollows can still p portion those those mines out. Um, other hollows can you know feel comfortable maybe to look into other options outside of explosives. You know, firearms got that cool might thing. I don't know. I think it's good. I think it's a really nice change and a key point of this patch actually, guys, for the competitive players, for the PvP players. I think that. That's a big one. Uh -huh. Is they've changed one of the alchemy grandmasters completely, okay? So there's a new grandmaster called Purity of Purpose, which I'm sure everyone will get <laughs> a kick out of. Like yeah. I don't know why that's a joke. I think Purity of Purpose is an important thing to think about. It it's is. Designer, it's but... an important thing to think about, but I love that they put that in as an actual trait in the game because it's such a callback to people making fun of it. Yeah, so Purity of Purpose, and it's really cool with what it does as well. When you would cleanse a condi from an ally, you convert it to a boon instead. So oh. one of the other changes was the elixir gun trait is no longer there. Um, and it, it, and that did something similar. It's now across the entire class. Is, and that, all is there no internal specializations cooldown on to come. Sorry, what's that? Is there no internal cooldown on that? There's no ICD. There's Ooh. no ICD. So, uh, yeah. So every cleanse you offer becomes a oh flip now. That's God. huge. I want to make a build out of that. There's a way to have, like, so it's also every time you apply protection, you apply regeneration, which cleanses, which also uh, flips now or something. There's there's all kinds of stuff that's available on wow. NG now. It's really, really, really curious. And You'll yeah. be throwing out alacrity on top of everything else now, world, too. World finisher in a water field or in a light field? I mean, there's a lot. There is a lot. And uh, I think that that's uh, one of the more interesting things that they're doing. Uh, but certainly not the be-all and end-all. I really do recommend you guys have a little bit of a deeper look at NG. Sadly, I'm not really an NG main. Um, Shredder Gyro becomes the ultimate boon giver. What does Shredder Gyro do again? It's oh, because the, the combo, it's, right? It's a gyro that just whirls in a field. In a light field, yeah. And you could drop the Alchemy 5. You could drop that. Alchemy, oh Alchemy Gun goodness. 5 is a light field. So you could totally pull that off. I don't know, guys. Uh, pretty interesting. And uh, I'm curious to see what that will do, the hollows and so forth. That's but there you cool. have it. All right, so that's NG Boots. Why don't you give me the highlights of your first class, which is Guardian, I believe. Just a lot of barrier. The, the other thing as well, guys, is a lot of barrier-related stuff on Scrapper. Like, you gain more barrier now whenever you'd be applied it. Um, barrier being So, a yeah, really a tank. It, it seems like there's going to be a real tank spec. Yeah, very much. Very, very, very much. I'm interested in the idea of scrapper supports making their way into conquest. I don't know whether this patch is enough, but if the devs keep pushing that angle, they can make it eventually. All right, so Guardian. All right, Guardian, Guardian. lay it on me. Just so that everybody knows, when Boots and I were reading our little sections, you had a bit of a freak out on the Guardian bit, didn't you? Uh, was it, I think it might have been the Necromancer that I had a bit of a Oh, really? Out. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Well, I'm excited yeah. anyway. So what, what has ArenaNet got for us on this uh, beautiful class here? Okay, well, what do you know about Guardian right now? What did it need, for example? Like, what did it need? Well, I, happening... I'm i going to cheat here. I have read the first line of this, and they're saying oh. spirit weapons. Okay, well, no, spirit weapons, yeah. Spirit weapons aren't very used. But I was going to say Firebrand is maybe a little bit too powerful. Oh, of course, games. right, yeah. So Firebrand is extremely dominant. Firebrand and Scourge. Uh, yeah. So, like, the Minesweeper Hollow nerf is one thing, but even higher on the list, probably for most people, is the strength of uh, Guardian. Uh, and right. Firebrand as a support is kind of obscene. The thing is, it needs to be carefully brought down in line as Scourges at the same time. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, we, we really want a choice. Do you want a Firebrand or a Tempest, right? You want a choice mm -hmm. to what you run, not just have this Super Saiyan God of a support, <laughs> which is what Firebrand so, is. 
So they started off here by saying, okay, spirit weapons have not felt solid due to having few too many uh, restrictions on their use. So the time between uses was reduced for all spirit weapons except for the crowd controlling hammer, which kind of makes sense. Uh, several firebrand skills were also too powerful, which became very clear in PvP and World vs. World games. So defending tome, defensive tomes received tweaks in these modes. And it comes through in the patch notes. So spirit weapons, um, they fixed a bug up there, but most importantly, uh, Sword of Justice, the Shield of the Avenger, and the Bow of Truth, uh, all, instead of having a cast, uh, you, there's a recharge between casts of eight seconds, even though you had like four... Uh, uh, four casts of them because they they, they have ammo now, right? If you guys remember from ammo. another patch a while ago, they they went to ammo. Those super out yeah. there wouldn't even remember that, but yeah. So you're they saying that ammo, the time but between... there's still a cooldown between them of eight seconds. Now it's down to one second. Oh wow! So you can quite spam them then. You could pretty much spam. You them, can have yeah. two hammers throw out at people very quickly, kind of thing. No, uh, not hammers, because that's still the same. But uh, you can Hammer send out your sword of justice and do like an insane amount of hits in the first four seconds of your fight. Oh yeah, I see it. I see it. I'm looking at it now. Wow, they're just whirling yeah. away there. Yeah. So, so in other words, it seems as though you could probably do some really good bursts with Sword of Justice, for example, or if you, for some reason, use Shield of the Avenger, um, it, you could actually use it more reactively to things instead yeah. of uh, instead of having to wait there there for the cast time. Interesting. Um, yeah. So for Firebrand, though, specifically, the mantras have been changed a little bit. Not too much, though. Uh, I'm actually surprised at how little they changed. Uh, they uh, fixed so some there, bugs. It's with... the cleansing mantra, which people really use a lot of, and stab as well. Obviously, the heal is extremely powerful as a mantra. Yes. Yeah. So actually, the really cleansing mantra did mantra. get the biggest nerf of them all. Which one had the biggest uh, nerf? Sorry. The the cleansing mantra. Oh, okay. And how was that? Uh, so that's the mantra of liberation, correct? Uh, mantra of law. No, no, no. No, law. Mantra of law is is the cleansing one. Oh, then I am wrong about this. Mantra of liberation, isn't that the... Uh... Let's look at this right now. Liberation, liberation is the elite. With the stab. Oh, the elite. Okay. All right. Well, actually, that's not so bad. Mantra so of liberation, which is the stun break, had the biggest nerf of them all, which went from 15 seconds to 25 second cooldown between casts. Oh, okay. Wow. Which is, uh, you know... You could cast it twice, uh, not half as often now. So it's not as good as it was before, but it's not terrible, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then Mantra Solus, the, the heal got a reduction of healing by 10% in PvP and War vs. World, and that's it. Is that it? Uh. That's it. I, I'm surprised at how little they got. Nerfed. Did they not touch support any further than that? What about the Titans They of and course things? did. They of course uh, okay. did. They, okay. The tomes got some hits to them. So So the way I would do this, by the way, is I would have much longer cooldowns on getting in and out of the tomes. That's like one of the only things I really think is super important. That is not what they did. Because then in you can fact, play around them based on what tome you see them have to a far greater extent. But they yeah, still feel it, like gods while they have them. Yeah. So in fact, they didn't do that. But uh, in fact, they did... So actually, you're right. I did, I did exclaim in in surprise when i was reading the guardian notes because of what exactly you just said okay um so i'm gonna get to that at the end but right now uh we got so tome of resolve reduced the healing of all healing skills in pvp and world versus world by 15 percent 15 15 it's not a huge nerf okay it's not all right but it's nerf. something though i think that that's it's that's something. that's not nothing that that's okay i think you know i don't yeah, want them to do too drastic seesawy things even if people feel like it's worth, n n necessary sometimes 15% yeah. on everything is it, it's something it is something and and they did uh, something important here and they in many cases they split pvp and world versus world from pve which is good because i don't think it needed that much of a nerf in pve at all definitely not pve it can be a god i don't care Go yeah go. who cares yeah. <laughs> um so, so they did the skill, skill split, which is very nice. Uh, this is the thing that I'm a little unhappy about, but I think it had to be done. Tome of Courage, Chapter 1, okay. removed the Aegis granted, granted from this skill. Wow! Boots, that's a big nerf. Yeah, so, it is a big nerf. So that people so know, you, you, you combo this with Pure of Heart. Uh, sorry, Communal Defense. Uh, no, 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 no. What is it? Oh, this is not my actual character, so the traits are all terrible. I think it's called Pure of Heart. It's the one that heals when Aegis blocks, right? That's, That's a right. huge, huge, huge nerf. There's basically no healing on the F3 now. Yeah, now I'm so now all it gives you is swiftness and stability, which is who cares? I, I mean, I, care. I think nice. that's strong. Stability I think is nice. 
I think that is that's that the, the the kit was not supposed to be about healing. I think it was supposed to be about mitigation, resistance yeah. mitigation. The the five obviously is crazy power mitigation. The reflect yeah, but also mitigation. the Aegis is mitigation. It just had a really nice synergy with the healing. Yeah, but it had too much synergy with the healing. Exactly. Aegis has appeared on the two though. I'm noticing, so it's got a bit. Yes, so it does give you three seconds of Aegis, and it, uh, the Tome Two they put a little bit of Aegis on there, so that's something. And that's going to change five rounds a lot. I'm actually really happy with that. That's significant to me. That's really it significant. It is very significant. Very um, nice. So to, uh, also the number four on the Tome of Courage, uh, a little bit of a reduction in pulses of resistance from four to three. Also very good. I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's a good shave. Uh, and then finally, the last one, reduce the toughness granted in PvP and Warfare's World by 33%. So okay. That's a lot too. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that last bit was actually too necessary. No. Um, so, but there is right here a huge change and it kind of made, it surprised me because of what you thought the best way to nerf this would be. And that's, uh, retributive armor has been changed to tenacious defense. It reduces the remaining recharge on virtue of courage, your F3, yeah. each time the Aegis you've granted blocks an attack. Wow. Yeah. So you thought the cooldowns were too low already. That's pretty interesting. The thing is, your access to Aegis is a little bit more limited now. Like, a much more limited, actually, in truth. So maybe it's not that, and it's, it's one second faster cooldown. Interesting, Grandmaster. Mm -hmm. I wonder how people feel against that, well, that is versus the others. And what was that replacing again? Uh, that is replacing Retributive Armor, which basically gave you toughness and... Uh... Gave you t 250 toughness and ferocity based on toughness. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Interesting. That is quite it's interesting. Very interesting. The and, way I you mean, you framed is... this, I was really scared they were going to give us like double dips into tomes or something, and no, it was going to be crazy. You could pretty... definitely make an Aegis build out of this, and like, and it says the Aegis you've granted, not the Aegis you've granted on you. So like, you spam Aegis to your friends, they all block attacks. You, you have ridiculously low cooldown on your virtue of courage, courage because of it. Yeah. I like what they've got for Valor on the bottom line now as well. So you run the focus, you block, 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 block. Blocking gives you Aegis, shares it to your yeah. allies, they block. So and this isn't this isn't only a buff for Firebrand and Core Warrior. This is a buff, uh, I would say, especially for, for Dragon uh, for Dragon Hunter on the F three. Yeah, the Dragon that Hunter. That F three is shield. very powerful, and yeah, yeah if and you then can you get can a... get back into the F three. That's actually amazing. That's really cool, boots. Good point. You yeah. use the F three, you block a ton of stuff. Wait, no, 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 but it's only Aegis. But that's not Aegis. You have to yeah. get Aegis and other means. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, though, yeah. if I cast Retreat and I put Aegis onto five of my allies and all of them have that Aegis yeah. block something, yeah. I've uh, just dropped my my cooldown by three seconds. Yeah, and you've just uh, five seconds, opened sorry. up a few new rune choices, too, like uh, runes of defense. Uh, also, uh, there's mm. those runes that every time you use a Signet, you get Aegis, which is something interesting as well yeah yeah also if i'm a firebrand and i run the, the cleanse mancha the final charge can turn burning into aegis and then that could bro oh the <laughs> all right well okay all right yeah. that's pretty okay. cool though that's interesting any and other highlights from the PvP. guardian yeah a little nerf to the you know when you get quickness you get a bunch of 250 stats now it's just 150 in pvp world versus world um and the rest is not that important just some uh some bug fixes okay all right well that's good i actually i'm okay with that i'll have to have a deeper look later but i think that's pretty cool i'm quite happy with that yeah, oh god i thought it was good changes so i'm interested about that tenacious defense though that's that could be broken yeah absolutely sure, absolutely yeah. i think that was a well targeted update there okay mm -hmm. so let's move on to mesmar oh my oh, god mesmer <laughs> It's like 12 pages long. Mesmer. So we will try to only do the highlights here, uh, okay. which is going to be tricky because there's so much. Let's just jump straight in what the devs say. Mesmer Phantasms were heavily reworked in this update. For more information, please check out the blog post. Uh, there were also changes to confusion, duration, and stack counts, which are part of a larger effort to cut down on confusion uptime in competitive modes. So just to be clear, guys, some highlights for the confusion changes. Jaunt as a Mirage has had its confusion duration halved. Uh, the hmm. trait that meant every single shatter inflicted blind and confusion. Well, the, the blind part not the stand, but the confusion. That's gone, and it's become a different trait, which loads all of the confusion into the F2. There's tons of references to Guild Wars 1 stuff going on here. Loads. But I know a lot of you are quite curious about Phantasm things. So, um, I actually have a build here. As I was reading this, uh, I started recognizing some opportunities. 
So, um, I'm just going to mouse over some, some things for the players here. First of all, Imagined Burden. This was an old Domination Grandmaster that's changed now. It was a greatsword thing that gave you might on the greatsword autos. It's now changed mm -hmm. to this, okay? Greatsword skills, other than the Spatial Surge, gain reduced recharge time, and they inflict cripples. Also, your Phantasmal Berserker, which, remember, will do one ability and despawn now. Phantasmal Berserker summons an additional Berserker, <laughs> but does less damage. So when you use Greatsword 4, you you create two two Greatsword 4, or fours at once on but this grand. It's essentially do... a new Grandmaster. So wait, hold on a second though. That, so that would if each is reduced by twenty five percent, the whole thing is increased by it's basically increased by fifty percent overall. Damage. Yeah, and uh, it's more packets or individual packets of damage, which can help you versus people you know like a guardian using yeah. their Focus Five or whatever. So, and then when they've done the attack, they both become clones? And you get more clone generation, yes. Yeah, so it's two clones you get out of it. I just demonstrated it for people on stream here. Um, also, very interestingly then, that has some synergy with other things that are going on in Chronomancer. So uh, Chronomancer, if you guys remember, has that trait, which means when you shatter a phantasm, it respawns. Chrono Phantasma wow. still works. So when your phantasms disappear, they just reappear and do it again. So if you run a Chronomancer that's using Imagined Burdened, you can combo the two together, which means a single cast of the Greatsword 4 on your Greatsword summons two Berserkers, which attack, despawn, and summons two Berserkers, wow. which attack and despawn. <laughs> not to wow. mention, this is Chronomancer. So you get the Signet of the Ether. Oh, well, no, sorry, not because it's Chronomancer, but there's also Signet of the Ether. I get confused with that because this was added after <laughs> launch, but not actually with Heart of Thorns. So you can cast the Phanta you can cast the Greatsword Four, create four phantasms, and while they're doing their thing, use your signet to create four more phantasms at once. So, wow. so this is like crazy burst potential. You got so much phantasm spam, throwing at eight phantasms wow. in a very short period of time. So my question is this, with the Chrono Phantasma, if they get resummoned because they just got lost, how quickly do they reattack? Is it it's much I guess it's much faster than uh, if a Chronomans the old phantasms Yeah, it, it's faster quick. than that. It's faster than waiting for the full cooldown. Uh, I mean people can see it on stream here. I, I'm showing them as I talk about it uh, as we go. Uh, it's hmm. pretty quick. It it's wow. it's pretty fast. You know, they'll swing, they'll despawn, they'll swing, they'll despawn. Um, it's to the point where the timing is perfect that you will have four separate phantasmal berserkers all attacking in unison, right? Wow. So it, it, it's, it's at that speed. It's about the speed to cast another signet. And again, people saw the animation there. So, But how can you have four of them? Th because they're not clones. Because they're not clones. They don't count for your illusion ca cap anymore, do they? So you have what? four out. Yeah, so it's insane. It's insane. And the traits you pick up on the way can buff it. Like, illusions do more damage. You get a lot of interrupt synergy on there. So, uh, so yeah, it's for this format, pretty interesting. For PvE, obviously, sustained DPS and stuff, that's a different question, which I'm not really sure I really want to go into. But that was, uh, that was one highlight for me seeing from this patch. Um, yeah. So, also, by the way, I don't mean to understate it. All these confusion changes are making me very, very happy. Okay, so another thing to talk about uh, is the Illusions line in general, which obviously is going to have a lot of changes with this big update that they've done. Um, so first, there's a new trait. It's called Escape Artist. Oh, my God, mm -hmm. the DCs. So what this means, guys, is whenever you stealth, you gain, uh, you generate a clone just straight up. So oh. it's like every stealth you cast is like a decoy, um, okay. the old utility. So there's a lot of generation on that. So then decoy would count, could grant two. Decoy would presumably create two. I can check that out actually right here. So we just run escape artist. We put ourselves in combat. It only works in combat. And then we use decoy. Yeah, decoy, we create two clones. So that's huh. nice. There's um, a reference to the Guild Wars 1 OP Mesmer skill Cry of Pain here. So uh, yeah, you now get confusion, more confusion basically purely on the F2. The confusion spam you do on other stuff isn't really there anymore. Uh, there's another okay. trait which makes Mind Rack, which is your F1, become ammunition based. Okay, so oh. um, it's like uh, send one clone in after another. Uh, what do you mean? Like you, it's if it's ammuni ammunition based, you you click it, and then oh, 
Yeah, it's, I see. It's your shatter. Mind rack will become ammunition based, so that's going to change up some power shatter builds. It seems like there's just a lot of really strong stuff and, and different stuff that they're rolling around here. Mm. Also of note is that alacrity trait that buffs the uh, chronomancer's alacrity, but only their alacrity. That's 50%. They didn't just put it back to 33. It's 50%. So your alacrity is really powerful on yourself if you do go for that trait. That was a really nice extra thing to see. Uh, they're one of the signets that previously was making your illusions tankier. That now just randomly spawns illusions consistently as you hold it. You can see that I was uh, running a bit of that in the footage here. Oh, there's just so much exciting stuff with Mesmer. There was significant... So far, it sounds like huge buffs all around. Yeah, there were some different chrono changes. I mean, I'm not really willing to say what's buffed, what's nerfed, because it is such a profound change for this class yeah. just in general. Yeah. I mean, almost anywhere you look, you'll find there's new buffs and boons and things rotating around, ro rolling around and that you can offer for yourselves. Uh, Phantasmal mm. Force, you guys might be wondering about, which was the old ramp trait, is actually still fairly sim similar. Phantasms deal increased damage for every stack of might we have as we summon them. And also we gain might whenever our phantasms become clones. So again, to run this um, <laughs> along with, with the combo I was talking about earlier means we get a ton of might from all of our greatsword mm -hmm. guys as they come through as well. Uh, and then the other thing you guys might be interested in is just what all of the phantasms in the game do. I wish I could show you all of them now, um, but we're trying to just do the highlights. But, uh, you know, so, so many of them have new and different animations. The sword phantasm does like a flurry of strikes now. The downstate huh. phantasmal rogue acts reasonably differently and they've ironed like several uh, 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 bugs and things out with it. Um, the class is super invigorated. I don't think I've ever actually seen a class be, be reinvigorated like this patch. If you're a Mesmer player, guys, it might be time to reinstall or look back in the game and see how you feel. new class. It is crazy. It is very, very crazy. So, uh, so yeah, I guess I'll, I'll leave it there before we go on for far too long. There are a couple of ambush changes on Mirage. Um, it's going to be an interesting few days in the league. It's going to be an interesting few days. So, yeah, it just seems like there's no way we, there's no way on this little stream we could cover all the changes here for Mesmer. It's there's just, there's it's no just... way. Like it, it just keeps scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, guys. All the underwater phantasms, everything, it's all there. Uh, oh my god. Nuts. Well, this will definitely give me some material to work with for. Oh, dude, for... for sure, for sure, <laughs> absolutely. Oh my god. Okay, so let's move on to Scourge now. Um, which I'm also very interested you mean in for the Necromancer. Sorry, yeah, ne Necromancer. <laughs> Uh, which I'm just because uh, the rest of Necromancer in. isn't gone just because Scourge is here. Yeah, okay, you know. fair enough. I guess that I've I've given it away there, haven't I? I've revealed <laughs> how I feel about the game at the moment. Uh, but I'm very interested in this for the same reason I was interested in Firebrand. It's kind of a league ahead of everything else, you know. It's yeah. it's, it's too strong. So let's see how they've done it. I have a lot of strong opinions about how they could nerf and change and tweak this class, and I think they've got a lot of tools for it. Let's see I would, I would like to say that the the at least one of the things they changed I thought is a it's even though it's not what I wanted them to do I think it's a very interesting thing to do and I want to see it in game. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to show it in game actually the way it's written. But anyway, here, okay, all right. So what, what, what do the devs say? What are their intents? Scourge shades have long been a pain point in uh, PvP and Warfare's world with their rabid corruption and few tells for players to spot. Well done, ArenaNet. That's exactly what you need they to say. Know. Yes. Exactly. They know. Uh, in this update, we're introducing better tells for shade actions, reducing the more oppressive condition applications and easing up on punishing boon corruption. So they, I think it looks like they're going to be doing the first one very well. I'm not so sure how well they uh, did the second two parts of that. Okay. Um, on other si uh, side of things, we've improved effects for uh, vampiric presence to make it more competitive with the auras of other professions. All right, uh, okay. That's an interesting one, actually. I'll show you that in a second. So a so, bit of a blood magic change there, but all right. Yeah. Let's talk about so these, scourge. these shades. Listen to this. Added a 0.5 second warning to enemy players on each shade and on the player when activating a shade skill. A, four, a 0.5 second warning? Yeah, so I, I want to see what this means in game. I have not seen it. Really uh, there's a huge animation see. now. I mean, visual noise is a big problem with Scourge as well, and they've just blown that out of the ass. It's even more so yeah. now. Uh, uh, so, but it's a 0.5 second warning to the enemy player, so that's great. You get Your enemy players are going to know when to dodge or when to get out of the way. Oh, yeah, I see it. It's like a coalescence of energy around us when we summon a shade or when we use Desert Shroud. I see it. And not on, on top of that, though, I guess that means there's sort of a 0.5 second delay on each of the shade skills now? Yeah, as I'm casting them, yeah. Yeah. Huh. 
So, so it's a little bit of a nerf to Scourge there, and then a, a big nerf because of the way that players are going to be able to, to anticipate be aware. what you're doing. See, I was a, I'm, I am a believer that a large portion of the, sh the Scourge's power is simply in not standing next to the thing, but it's difficult when they get it on them as well, and they will aggress you, and when you have no mm -hmm. good poke options. Uh, so so the good nice. thing about this, I, I like this because uh, it it's not like a number nerf to Necromancer, or yeah. Scourge, I mean, but it is a nerf in that uh, it encourages smart play from your opponents. Oh, it's like, the visual noise, though, Boots. The I visual know, noise, it's I know. insane. This is going to be rough. This is going to be rough. But, but it, it, honestly, it's like, it's like ArenaNet writing down on a patch note saying other players get good, but allowing them to do so by putting something in the game that yeah. they could. Just a bit more counterplay to it. I've, exactly. I, I believe Hollow is the best elite specialization just because of how visual it is and how well designed its tails all are. But it's so fun to play against Hollow Man, so it's so fun. Even with the Minesweeper stuff, it's really fun. And mm -hmm. um, Scourge needs a bit more of that. Not in this kind of vomit yellow all over the screen way, but I guess it's a start. <laughs> so I'm happy. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So so for um, the they talk about oppressive condition application and easing up on punishing boon corruptions. They did a little bit of it, but not that much. So, um, feet of corruption, you get alacrity now because it's a boon. Um, they have just sorry, a, what's this alacrity? What? Oh, feet of corruption. It grants three seconds of alacrity when alacrity when corrupting alacrity from a foe. Oh, it's okay. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. I I remember the grandmaster. That means you take what you corrupt. Yeah. Yeah. So the only times they actually like uh, reduce. Uh, conversions is here in uh, Path of Corruption from 2 to 1. Okay. When coupled with the Scourge specialization. So Path of Corruption is the one that... This uh, is, is the, the trait, trait that's really yeah. uh, really sort of OP. It means that your F2, which on Scourge is super low cooldown, will convert. Mm -hmm. and so, sorry, what was the specific nerf? It's still 2 when you're anything but Scourge. Now, if But if you are using the Scourge specialization, it only corrupts 1. Oh, I see that actually. That's weird. Look at that. Yeah. They're kind of breaking the rules there a little bit doing that. They're breaking mm -hmm. the rules. They can't yeah. do that. But if they're opening they that it. door, that's an, that's that's a lot of opportunity. That's unintuitive for players to grapple with. Random mm -hmm. nerfs hitting random traits because you picked up new specializations. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's something that I thought in the beta of Path of Fire, something that I thought they were doing to Firebrand when they were do there was like... Uh, the the tooltip for Firebrand Tome of Justice was lower passive burning than yeah uh, yeah but I guess they've reverted that I don't know anyway uh, so here's a big one vampiric presence okay the the power contribution from the necromancer to the damage portion of this trait has been increased by twelve hundred percent twelve hundred percent I'm sorry so what what are we talking about right now blood magic yeah. We're we're talking about blood magic, the trait that gives you and all your friends around you a little bit of life steal on every hit. I remember this. Okay. Yeah. So right now, there's like it, it does not scale at all, basically, with power or healing power. It's like 0.0025% scaling. Yeah. And healing power is 0 0.005. Uh, and so in 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 uh, actual use, it's like 35. May I think it goes up to like 40 damage, healing and damage on hit. Okay. So that's not very high. But now they're, they've increased the scaling by 1,200%. So that means that instead of 0 0.0025, it's 0 0.3 or 0 0.03. 0 0.03 now. Okay. So so with like 2,000 2, power, you're going to have like uh, 100. So a power, you're telling me that if we run heavy power as a blood magic necro now, this will start hitting. This will start chunking. Yeah, kind That's of. That's good. So, like, instead of 40, it'll be up to, like, 110, 120, 130. Yeah, and there's no internal cooldown on it, so there, fast hit uh, attacks. Nope, nope. This is where... So, I was really happy about it until I read the last line. Oh. The effect now has a 0.5 second internal cooldown. Oh, oh, that's lame. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So, I see. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. Well, maybe it will have a bit more impact now, and you'll notice it, and it will feel a bit better. I'm also noticing it says it does more while you're in Shroud. Yeah, 100% more effectiveness while in Shroud. So that is the interesting part about this whole so thing. So now while we are in Shroud, we life steal a lot harder. I wonder what that means harder. for Core Necro. That's cool. I like it. It's very cool. It's I could see a lot of interesting, strong life steal tanky builds because of this. It used to be that Lifesteal and Shroud was the worst thing to combo because you could never heal yourself in Shroud because you were in Shroud. And yeah. then they changed that, and now they're even in encouraging it. I like this. Yeah. 
this could be a pretty good um, uh, buff to Reapers, actually. Yeah. Well, Reapers run through Shroud very quickly, which is why I said Cornet Crow oh, as well. Oh, yeah, earlier. that's true. The Shroud is gone now. It, it, to the old Reaper. Good yeah, for the old, old Reaper. Reaper. <laughs> if there was a world where both existed together. But I like this. That's cool. That's interesting. Yeah. So is that it yeah. for, for Scourge, by the way? Um, do, 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 do. They nerfed the Sand Shade skills nominally in a lot of places. Like, reduced uh, the, the cooldowns have gone up to 10 seconds from 8 seconds. Okay, longer uh, cooldowns, good. Yeah, uh, just a lot of little nerfs here and there, um, and also to punishment skills. So no nothing too too major besides... But a slow tune saying. down, and with Firebrand coming down as well, look, this is all in the right direction. Whether it's enough or not is another discussion, but this is all in the right direction for the competitive sides of the game, I think. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's very good. So cool. Go. That's Necromancer. So, so let's, those, let's... those are a lot of the big ticket uh, classes as well. Mm -hmm. that we've just gone through there. All right, so um, w w I'm going to go and read some other professions now, guys, and we'll be back very shortly. <laughs> all right, so Revenant, all right? Um, the what, what do you think about Revenant just as we go in? Anything particular you're looking for there? I am looking for uh, probably something nice to happen to Revenant spirits. Spirits, right. So you're thinking the, uh, more renegades. Renegade. I think yeah. that's that's perfectly fair. Well, so here's what the devs say. Power build rev revenants have been languishing behind their condition build counterparts. Which is just, yes. I don't know what, what format they're talking about there. For PvP, revenants like really bad. It's one of the worst ones in the game, to be honest, at the moment. And it's <laughs> unfortunate. Um, and certainly, well, renegade, let me put it that way. Renegade, like if you were running spirit renegade with a short bow, you're probably not doing very well in PvP, sadly. Yeah. I don't know yeah. how much this patch has really done to address that. But so the devs say that condi builds are doing better and power is languishing. So to address this, they've said the impossible odds, phase traversal and the focus siphoning trait. So this is Shiro devastation stuff were right. changed to give Shiro Tagachi invocation and the devastation specialization more burst potential. They're also Ooh. saying that while targeting particular changes, Renegade received several short bow damage increases and legend energy cost improvements in PvP and World vs. World to smooth their gameplay in a competitive arena. Interesting. So, uh, okay, so they saw that Renegade was not useful in PvP. In competitive formats, and they're trying to address that with energy changes. I don't know how far that will go. Yeah, still the problem with like the, the legends being able to be interrupted and stuff, right? Yeah, like the spirits and whatnot. So spirits, I'm not sure yeah, how much the, the energy will change things, but it does still feel bad with the energy, in my opinion. And this is not the mm -hmm. first time they've changed energy. But so to go to some highlights, first of all, Herald change as well. Someone was complaining to me about this in a recent stream. And to you, my friend, uh, I hope you're happy. Uh, if you were a Herald that was mounting, your facets would turn off and then you'd have to refacet and then you'd have to do it every time you mounted and dismounted. They've now changed it so that that all works for you. And okay, you're... so they'll reactivate when you dismount, but they won't be like active while you're on while it. While you're on it, no. I, I guess that doesn't okay. really mean anything. Well, I yeah. Wait, could, do yeah. they get the benefit of boons? Mounts? Uh, Can you boon mounts? I, well, I don't they don't, but you would. So like, I mean, nothing really much from the Revenant, uh, Revenant but like uh, a Guardian with his... Uh, Aegis gets to block something when he's on his mount. Yeah. Okay, well, so yeah. there you go. That's a, that's a little thing. Uh, let's talk about some of the other stuff. I want to talk about uh, the, the bursty changes. So, impossible odds. This is the upkeep. It mm -hmm. uh, gives you quickness and super speed. They say mm -hmm. here that they've reduced the energy drain from 10 to 8. So, that's nice, oh. guys. That means you can be in impossible odds and do more stuff. You're still draining, but not 100% speed draining. So, that's nice. Yeah. Ever since this skill's existed, it has been 100% drain. It's not anymore. I think that's cool. And uh, they also say gaining quickness has been replaced oh. with inflicting a secondary strike when you hit a foe. Yeah, I was just thinking, hey, now you could maybe do a uh, infinite quickness build with that. But no, I guess not. Well, but, but, but when you think about other formats and the strength of other people giving you quickness... You can have your cake and eat it too. That's right. It's so, uh, just a buff for uh, PvE yeah, rating. Exactly. So these multi-packet strikes. We've seen so many of these. Even the vampirism change we saw a second ago. If you think about the uh, uh, um, Soul Beast Elite. We've seen a lot of that recently. Uh, the Renegade as well. Now, obviously with the Spirit. I wonder hold if on the... a second though. The second strike when hitting a foe. Is there an internal cooldown on that? Uh, yes. Of a quarter of a second. That's a low internal cooldown. Yeah. It's pretty low. So, someone else gives you quickness, or you get quickness from somewhere else on this class, which we'll talk about in just a second. Or, 
Or you just now have your second legend to use when you have your Mad King Rune Revenant build. Oh my god, yeah, all right. I'll wait for the bad Boots bad build on that. We'll, we'll see. Well, no, it's, just, it's just a little buff because <laughs> you, you have your legend that you activate uh, in Renegade when you have the thing that siphons life. Or, and then when you switch off of it to gain energy, you use this and you double hit everything. So other changes on the class, guys, they uh, obviously have confusion application. It's the same across the board. Short duration, but high stack confusion. I won't go through every single little bit of that. Um, but also, to pair with this, if we have a look at Devastation, there's basically a new Grandmaster. Now, competitive players are going to care more about this. Um, it's uh, really quite incredible. So for Grandmaster, you've got extra damage at low health. You've got Assassin's Annihilation, which is the crazy lifesteal. The third Grandmaster was always a bit lame. It was called Dismantle Fortifications, and it meant when you strip stab, you strip two instead. Right. And the idea was you can rip through break bars quicker. Yeah. Well, now uh, it's the same idea, but it's really strong. And it's got a great name. I lo Whoever's naming these traits lately, like we saw Dread came in on the Necro recently. This is brilliant. It's called Brutality. Grandmaster Brutality. Devastation Trait. Gain quickness whenever you swap weapons. While you have quickness, all of your strikes remove stability. What? So, yeah, you're going to quickness charge in on people, ripping through... You know, like, these rangers that can pump 25 stab on themselves really easily? Uh, a, a revenant can go toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with that. Uh, I don't... What? Uh, this is <laughs> what? obscene. I mean, I love it. I think it's actually created a niche competitively. This is like really, really cool for the for the yeah. the, the brutal power revs. I'm interested um, to see what people see with brutality. What this a cool train! Insane. It is insane, isn't it? It's totally insane. It's very cool. Is and there, you guys... Hold on, is there an internal cooldown on it? No, no, no. You just rip. You just rip. Oh you just go mental God. and you rip them. It's like Hello World versus World. <laughs> I mean, I love it. I, I think it's so cool. And it, 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 for World versus World as well, you might think, ah, yeah, but, you know, are you really going to be melee training on yeah. something like that? It doesn't even matter. You could run short bow as a renegade. You've got your hammer, and you mm -hmm. could be stripping stab with your yeah. hammer attacks. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it strips it before, like, if you use the hammer five, if it would strip it before that and then we're knocked down. Really, really fun. Now, also, another recent thing. We've seen some great balance lately, guys. If you remember the previous balance of boost, we saw Song of the Mist came in on um, Invocation, which is you get a special effect when you legend swap based on the legend you go to. So there was Call of the Assassin, Call of the Dwarf, Call of the Demon. They've updated a lot of these so that they do more. So, like, Call of the Dragon does much heavier damage in PvE now. Uh, but they've done a change for um, Call of the Assassin, which has got some interesting synergy with what I was talking about a second ago. Uh, increase... Oh, no, no, sorry. That's not the one I was talking about. Call of the Assassin gives you quickness on swap, though. So you swap yeah. two Shiro, you have quickness, which combos with the new impossible odds instead of weirdly overlapping with it, because impossible odds itself won't give you quickness anymore. You can run that with brutality, and it also now increases the damage... Inf the, the damage it does as you swap to it is now 86% higher. So wow. really, really solid... Uh, and they basically just tuned a lot of those up. So I'm very excited about a lot of these things. And uh, that's that brutality thing. I wonder with that brutality thing if uh, if the removal of stability accounts towards break bars. Uh, I don't think it counts as break bar damage. Okay, never mind then. That would be an interesting way for PvE to reflect their role in the competitive formats too. I get what you mean. You but... just need like one revenant to take down an entire boss break bar. Yeah, or, or you know what the devs all the devs need to do is they need to add mobs that have stab, and while they have stab, you can't damage break bars. And then mm -hmm. and then there's a question of having in your comp not just the CC to get through the break bar, but the boon rip to get through the and stab the as well. CC. And then boom, maybe people are looking at revs to do that part of the role. Maybe. Maybe. You know? I think that I th it is really cool. I love brutality. That, that's that's the highlights, guys. There are other changes. Let me just quickly say, Renegade, as the dev said, there have been Renegade changes. Short bow, Renegade, interesting stuff. 300% more damage on the five. So this shockwave that knocks people down, that's now a meaty hit. That's in the competitive formats, but that's also uh, another big thing. And, uh, you know, they've, they've shuffled the condies and things around on there too. So, uh, yeah, fun stuff with Rev. And um, I guess we'll move over to you now if you want. Yeah, I like these uh, reduction of cost though of the of the yeah. Class sorry, sorry. Yeah, like so that. the cost reductions I mentioned before. To be more specific, it's like your F abilities are lower cost. Uh, even the spirits do. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, so yeah. Hold on a second. The orders from above. I think this might be a typo. Reduce the energy cost from two hundred and thirty-five to two hundred and thirty. Yeah, just by a tiny bit, I guess. Maybe just a bit. 
Um, right. Okay, so I'll go back up to Ranger now. Okay, uh, so Ranger. Ranger uh, did not get a lot of uh, changes. All right. Um, Unfortunate. But There's a lot of people who will have gone to the description and they're like, I only play Ranger. And they've clicked here and that's the first thing that they've heard you say. You got yeah, they didn't, get a lot of, they didn't get a lot of changes, but they did get some love, it seems, in a way that was needed. Okay, um, so what do you mean? And so here, I'll read you this thing. For Rangers, this update focused on bug fixes and improvement to soul B <laughs> skills. Uh, do you know what? It's because of that Boots Bad video we did where... It might be. Um, Wait, we saw be. all those bugs. That's what yeah. it is, man. <laughs> uh, we've allowed stances shared with Leader of the Pack to stack duration, and we have updated several of the merged pet tax skills. We hope that these changes will give Soul Beast players a wider variety of pets to play with in various areas of the game. Oh, I'm sorry. What? So if I share a stance and another Soul Beast shares a stance, they'll Before stack this duration? Patch, they would not stack duration. Oh, now they will. That's a nice bit of now quality of life. Okay. Exactly. So that that is the major change, I would say, that happened in this patch for a ranger, is that one particular skill change, uh, trait change. Right. So so it, it's a nice little uh, buff to PvE and, uh, yeah, and I guess maybe in, other, in World vs. World and stuff like that, if you have a lot of rangers going around, given, yeah, it could be good. Um, so now, so that's number one. And then you have a lot of... Uh, little bug fixes so for example like remember that spider uh, merge skill poison gla gas that like would go behind the target when you when you yeah cast i it? remember i remember yeah so fix a bug in which the skill would strike at its maximum range rather than its targeted range and fix another bug that prevented the radius from effect from displaying this is good these are 2012 fixes they're getting them in there <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it just looks like a lot of bug fixes. Um, so a lot of some some things got a lot more increased damage, uh, like uh, feline bite, tail lash from wyvern, uh, smoke scale takedown. Uh, we got some confusion changes to the pet attacks. Okay. Same um, same thing like Drake, I guess the the uh, yeah. reef Drake. Yeah. Same thing like reduced duration in PvP and World versus World, but increased stacks in a few places. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Just general little oh, buffs really? here and there. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. it, it, they could be interesting for, for certain builds, for certain pets that you like to use, because it looks like there haven't really been any nerfs to Has any Has anything affected things. Druid sustain or cleanse potential? Uh, do not believe so, no. Okay. All right. Well, so there yeah. you go, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Changes to beast the mode traits. They added electricity to the thing. Dude, that's that a lot of damage buffs, buffs, though. On a yeah, lot of that's beast what I'm saying. Stuff, there's, yeah. there's some good damage buffs on certain skills. So Moa gets 100% more damage if you use Well, it didn't do that much in the first place, but yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, so there you go. Uh, I hope you, <laughs> the Ranger players enjoyed. Moving on. Um, I guess <laughs> but honestly, that's, that stance stayer thing is very important. That's yeah. Good. Okay. For sure. Uh, so we'll go to Thief then. Um which I've had a little bit of a look over here. Uh, and it seems like PvE dead eyes that like your rifles, because we know PvE dead eyes great uh, with pistol pistol. Uh, and it's even had some success in competitive formats. Uh, but the PvE rifle, guys, you're going to be happy with this. So here's what the devs say. We felt that the current offering of stolen items wasn't scaling well enough with the difficulty of raid bosses. So mm -hmm. we added a selection of new stolen items that have effects tailored to the needs of a raid party. That is cool. So new stolen stuff. And remember, as a dead eye, what you steal is different. Yeah. But as a core thief now, there's different things. I think that is what they mean. Yeah, but um, hold on a second. Does does that is it does it replace just core thieves or also dead eyes specifically for raids? I, I'm not actually sure. I'm not sure. Uh, but so because I haven't gone into a raid with it just yet. But right. uh, the dead eyes malice generation, while appropriate for normal enemies, ended up scaling poorly against larger bosses with lots of health. Losing mm. malice because of a mark timeout in a long fight felt disappointing. So, and this is a pretty big change. This is not, it's raid oriented as they're discussing here, but I think this affects the entirety of Guild Wars 2. They say we've updated Dead Eyes Mark to preserve Malice stacks when marking the same target twice in a row. Huh. We've also increased the power of several rifle skills to account for the higher health of PvE enemies. 
So again, yeah, because if you're running around in Kershaw with a rifle, you have lots of fun. It, um, if you're in the new maps, though, the rifle, it is a very stationary playstyle. And unless you're actually packing the, pa the punches, it can feel a bit poo. I totally yeah. get that. So Me basically, too. what you're looking at, guys, is huge amounts of rifle buffs. Huge. Good. Good. Um, uh, Twenty-five percent more damage on deadly aim. Twenty-one percent more spot PVE, shot. Right? Just on PVE, yeah. Oh. The death's judgment nuke uh, scaling per malice tick has gone from fifteen to twenty. So that's not just that. That's a huge buff. Okay. When you have max malice, that's what's five times seven. Thirty-five percent more damage. Wait, yeah. no. How many? How much malice is max malice? Is it seven? Anyway, seven it's a with lot. A, with the thing. It's a lot of extra damage, guys. Uh, so yeah, they got that bountiful theft when you steal stuff you can now give yourself alacrity They specifically talk about that. They talk about consumed plasma offering alacrity um, And so yeah, the new stolen skills as well uh, There's the unstable artifact shadow step to an area and deliver a large immobilizing strike if a downed ally is in your target area You'll instead shadow step to them and partially Person revive them, them. Uh, oh, de it's a bit of a weird skill, isn't it? Detonate pat plasma, though. Activate it to apply many boons to nearby allies. Okay. S soul stone venom. Use a corrupted soul stone to immediately remove all conditions from nearby allies, converting each unique condition into uh, that you removed into an instance of st soul stone venom on that ally. When attacking, while this venom is active, additional strike that source from the applying thief will be applied to all of your successful hits. Ooh, weird. So it's like a venom stolen skill there. Yeah, and then but what, is the, what does it do? Well, we'll have to go in and check, I guess. And then finally, magnetic bomb. Throw a magnetic bomb that continuously damages and pulls enemies to a point. So That's you've obviously got some break bar utility there. You've got some support utility. You've got a lot there. Wait, and yeah, it, you can tell how it's think it's raid minded. Those raid specific cool. items. Yeah, there. Lots, lots of utility. Now, my important question is, when you steal, uh, it's raid specific skills, yes. But do you gain a random one of these, or is it? A specific one of these per boss assigned to the bosses. Yeah, I don't know boots. I don't know Okay, I would guess that there's gonna be some RNG on it, but that would be mm. my guess So okay. yeah, um, and that will make thief experience him. and I kind of like that as well because still kind of is a defining thing of thief You know, and it's nice to have the the PvE end game acknowledge it on a deeper level I hadn't realized that that was something I'd want to see but I think it is yeah. So I would have loved I, I would have loved to see like also unique steals per unique bosses too like if it is random then maybe you have like a five percent chance of getting the keep construct stolen item or something or like Zara's stuff yeah. I don't know yeah that would yeah. be interesting yeah huh anyway that, that hasn't happened and it probably won't but this is an interesting change nonetheless I do like playing as a rifle dead eye by the way I'm actually in Kershaw killing people with it right now it is fun it is nice oh, good. All right. Good. Okay. Maybe, so maybe that will uh, replace the pistol. Pistol. So, what does that leave us with, boots? Last but not least, is warrior. All right. So, how are you feeling about warrior? You didn't spit. You didn't sound very excited there. No, there wasn't anything crazy about it. Um, but it, you know, it it All right. it seems like it could be okay. okay so, so, our main focus see. for warrior was to improve power damage and group utility in PVE. We approach okay. this by adding multipliers to various trait sections and improving some base weapon damage with the intent of giving Warrior a more viable core power build. Okay. Berserker maintains its condition effectiveness, and Spellbreaker continues with its disruptive behavior. We also tone down some Spellbreaker effectiveness for PvP and Warriors World, so there's more time to react and counter and proper skills. Mm. Uh, I don't know if that's... they did. I don't know how effectively they did that, but we'll see. Spellbreaker um, is very strong on side. This is a very strong build. So let's see what we got. Uh, so great, so uh, buffs the great sword basically. Uh, Thirty-five percent damage to one of their auto attacks. Thirty-eight percent damage to another one of their auto attacks. Oh damn! Um, okay. Yeah. So great sword buffs. Uh, no axe buffs on that, except for in PVE only, act twenty percent extra damage on their axe five. Oh okay. All right. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, that's and ten percent on hundred blades in PVE only. Okay. Um. So just, you know, all around some buffs, but I, I expected them if they wanted to do a more um, power power build, they'd do more buffs to Axe, but I guess they decided not to. Yeah, I'm still going on on the Axe as well. I, I mean, Axe has had some love lately. It has had some love. It has. It has, but it's still not, you know, enough damage. So uh, to, to, to go along with, like, the Condi Warrior. 
Um, so it's hard to say that they've achieved Yeah, but their... the entire game is not just raids. I don't really mind that too much. I guess so. I guess so, yeah. So you could do an axe, sword, just general PvE, I guess, and it would be very strong. Um, so then we have Banner of Tactics. Uh, a little buff, I guess, because now it gives 170 uh, concentration at level 80 instead of 10% boon duration. So that's like almost 12% now. Okay. So whatever. Um... Confusion changes for Skull Grinder uh, in World versus World now. In, uh, in line with the same stuff. In, in line with uh, PvP, actually. Um, here's a kind of a weird one. Okay. Warrior Sprint right. now grants seven percent damage. This increase. is the MO ripping trait, right? Yeah, it's when you move, use a movement skill, you rip a mob, and also gives you twenty-five percent movement increase. Yep. Uh, so this trait now gives seven percent damage when you have swiftness and you have this trait oh okay so extra seven percent damage only. while swiftness is on you only yeah. in pve only in pve because in pvp you get only a three percent damage increase while you have swiftness oh you know uh <laughs> weaver has seven percent damage on swiftness as well but it's an elite specialization slot yeah. so so this is kind of trying to give you some kind of buff uh, so that like when you have swiftness you don't feel like oh who cares really I have swiftness because I already have that 25% uh, yeah. movement speed uh, so you get 7% damage increase in PvE but PvP is less interesting 3% is not so crazy hmm. and that's yeah. kind of a boring slot well they'll run more sprint for the other util utility that offers in PvP obviously Yeah. if you're yeah. in discipline <clears throat> yeah so okay. a, a little nerf I guess to spellbreaker winds and winds of disenchantment uh, the internal cooldown has gone from 0.5 seconds to 1 second okay uh, so instead of ripping 20 boons or whatever it'll rip 10 boons yep and that's going to be a wild versus wild effector mm -hmm. um, and what else do we got oh here's an interesting one merciless hammer Okay. Confusion inflicted by this trait, again, with the PvP kind of stuff, uh, has does six stacks instead of four stacks for four seconds okay. in PvP and Warbirds World only. Kind of strong. Um, tethered, okay, Mage Bait and Tether, you get 10% bonus damage when you have your Tethered target. No! Oh, I struggle so much against Mage Bane Tether in at the moment. In PvE only. Oh, okay. All right, that's fine. I'm all right with that. That's <laughs> so I guess it's trying that's to give... That is so much like Big Game Hunter, the Dragon Hunter trait that was mm -hmm. a create a tether and do more damage with the tether on them. It's yeah, like it's very similar. The same thing. It's basically the same thing, yeah. Um, and uh, so, in, inspiring battle standard, that stupid trait that just gave you regeneration when you had a battle uh, banner a out, banner around, yeah. Now also increases the effect of the banners by fifty percent on war on the warrior itself. What line is that in again? That is in tactics. Oh, it's tactics. I thought it was defense for a second. So, okay. So, what does it do again? So, it makes the banners you have 50% stronger for you. Oh, 50% stronger banners for us. And the regeneration is no longer on it at all, is it? Uh, no. Oh, actually, maybe it does. I didn't check, but uh, I thought it was just on top of it. But maybe they did remove the regeneration. I didn't see. Really? Huh. Wow. Okay. No, no, it's in addition to its previous effect. So yeah, it's uh, it, the regeneration is still there. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, and that's basically it. Except for here, loss aversion. Um, you know, loss aversion when you remove a boon uh, from an enemy, uh, they take damage and yeah. you gain adrenaline. Mm -hmm. So they was this something that did a lot of damage in PvP and World versus World? Yeah, loss aversion could 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 clip people definitely. Well, I guess in World vs. World, it definitely would. Uh, I know it's already lower damage than the PvE version, but they've actually reduced it even more by 33% in PvP and World vs. World. Oh, wow. 33% too. Okay. Yeah. So that's some real offense uh, alterations there. Okay. Yeah. And that is it. And that's Warrior. Wow. Sorry yeah. I didn't really get to visually show off too much of that stuff there, guys, on Warrior, but there you have it. And that's yeah, the, uh, the nine classes. We haven't forgotten one this week, have we? I do not think so. I hope we I haven't. We, okay. <laughs> we did well. We did well. So there you go. That's Balance with Boots, guys. Um, obviously, keep an eye on our channels, the things we do. We'll be talking a lot more about this stuff as we go forwards. But hopefully this overview has been interesting to you. There is a link in the description to both Boots' channel and the full patch notes if you're interested. But probably the best way to tackle this is to get in game and have a look at uh, a few of the things that have changed. Another good balance patch on paper that I've seen so far. I'm curious yeah. to see how the game will shift. Um, since this is Some interesting trade changes that might cause mass 
massive disruption, and we will see what happens. I mean, yeah, but, uh, anything centered or revolving or involving Mesmer at the moment is going to be really interesting to watch. So yeah. uh, we'll keep you up to date with all of that, guys, and we'll be back for more Balance of Boots as and when it's relevant. Thanks, guys. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming on Boots, and we'll see you next time.